Welcome to Mula Insider this week and all the eyes are on the World Rally Championships 2021 which are coming back to Kenya after 20 years. We'll also be touching on matters pension and why you need to plan for your retirement. My name is Margaret Wahinto. The World Rally Championships come back to Kenya after 20 years and a lot of work has gone into planning from the rally fraternity, the government and the stakeholders. But we wanted to look at what does it take to participate in a rally event. Let's take a look. There are two main cost areas in rallying, the team behind the wheel and the vehicle itself. The team behind the wheel consists of the driver and the navigator, and they need special driving gear, which consists of branded overalls, helmets, and an intercom for their communication. The fuel gear costs about 400,000 shillings, and that is 200,000 shillings for the branded overalls and 200,000 shillings for the helmets and their intercom. The team in the car is supported by a service team which ensures their car is in the best condition to race. It consists mostly of mechanics, engineers, whose accommodation and meals are taken care of and an allowance is paid. Naturally, the team will need accommodation and meals for the duration of the rally. For the three-day safari rally that comes to accommodation, that cost about 115,000 shillings for the entire team. Food and beverages cost about 85,000 shillings. The other determinant of the rally and of course even for the crew after all costs have been taken care of including accommodation and food and, and, and their safety is the type of car that they'll be using. There are four main categories of rally cars, a two-wheel drive, an entry-level four-wheel drive, a mid-level four-wheel drive and an R5. Naturally, the price of the vehicle depends on its age, mileage and condition meaning the prices range from about 500,000 shillings for a two-wheel Volkswagen Golf to 5 million shillings for the M Sport Ford Fiesta R1 to 26 million shillings for the Ford Fiesta R5. Now, for the rally itself, the team has to go through a recce to study the entire track and to see where the opportunities are, where they need to be careful, of course for them to have a clear picture of how the track looks like when the day comes for Safari Rally. And this costs money too. Some rally cars use AV gas, a type of aviation fuel, while others use FIA fuel. For the WRC Safari Rally, only non-priority drivers have been allowed to use AV gas, which will cost them about 165,000 shillings for the entire rally, recce and the other related events in between. For the FIA priority drivers, they are required to use the FIA fuel, which is being supplied by Total for the WRC Safari Rally at a cost of five euros and sixty cents. That's about seven hundred and twenty-one shillings plus value-added tax per liter. As the cars finish its stage, they're taken in for complete service, and this means they will need new parts. The prices of these parts are determined by the make of the car. For Mitsubishi Lancer Evo X RAV4, for example, the entire range of spare parts comes to a total of eight million shillings. With a grueling rally like the Safari Rally, the shock absorbers have to be replaced at one point. A set of Xi'an Group N dampers go for 1 million shillings for a set of four. The other component of the cars apart from the gas is also the tyres. All WRC cars are allowed a maximum of 24 tyres plus four spares and all other cars 22 tyres plus four spares for the duration of the rally. Each set of tyres cost about 52,000 shillings with rims at 25,000 shillings each and this means that for the three days of the rally each car can use tyres and rims costing up to 2.1 million shillings. Each car in the rally needs a service car and for the three-day rally, recce and related events, the cost of hiring, fueling and maintaining the service car comes to a combined cost of about 145,000 shillings. And as they race on the ground, there are eyes in helicopters above, spotting dangers, calling in help, evacuating the injured and taking photos and videos of the action below. Helicopters are expensive to keep in the air and they need tracking equipment. All told, the cost of putting a team in the WRC Safari Rally is well mind-boggling. It can be as low as 5.3 million shillings for a basic entry-level vehicle or as high as possible, mainly depending on the machine you intend to use. And that's why you'll probably need a sponsor. 
My name is Masi Milanoe. This is Mula Insider. And of course, we will be on the ground to tell you how the rally goes. And of course, we'll be educating you more on what goes on behind the scenes when it comes to Safari Rally. <laughs> Our living expenses such as food, water, and even housing do not retire. That is why having a pension plan is very crucial so that you're able to cater for these expenses when you retire. Now, Masi Milanoi, who is in the lavish sides of Nairobi, will take us through on some of the issues or some of the things we need to know about pension. Masi. Hello everyone, my name is Masi Milanoe and today we are in the streets of the lavish side of Nairobi and simply we are here to look at the ABCs of pension. Personally, I love the streets because I love the silence and this is what I want for my retirement. So we are here to teach you about the ABCs of pension. What is pension? What are the pension plans? How are you eligible for pension? And of course, some tips on you having a happy retirement. So let's dig in. Everybody dreams of a happy retirement. Imagine after working for 30, 40 or even 50 years, you finally have a chance to enjoy your golden years and enjoy the fruits of your labor. But retirement can be better or even better, depending on how you plan for it. And one of the ways you can plan for your retirement and have a happy one is by planning your pension. So we're going to take a look at what pension is, what plans are available, and a few tips for you to have a happy retirement. But first up, what is pension? A pension or retirement benefit scheme is a form of insurance. The scheme protects members against the risk of poverty in old age by ensuring that they are able to provide for themselves in retirement. And now that you know what pension is, you need a pension or retirement plan so that you can be able to save for a happy and of course a comfortable retirement. A pension plan, also referred to as a retirement plan, is a vehicle or service offered by insurance companies to build some up of money that can be used upon retirement. The money you put in is invested to generate a regular income referred to as pension. This way, you don't have to depend on your children or anyone during your golden years. You can have a happy one and of course you can go for the trips and finally enjoy your golden years after working for so long. Now that you know what pension is and a pension plan, how can you save for retirement? There are several schemes. There is individual, there is government, and of course what is provided for by your employer. The first one is the employer-sponsored scheme. This scheme is offered by your employer for the benefit of employees. However, it's important to note, it is not compulsory for employers to form pension schemes. However, employees can come together and form their own scheme. The next one is the individual scheme and this one is mostly for people who are not under the employer scheme or even if you're under an employer scheme you can choose to take an individual one but this one mostly refers to especially for freelancers, for consultants and people who are not under an employment benefit scheme. The other one is the government scheme. In Kenya we have the National Social Security Fund also known as NSSF which only provides basic financial security to Kenyans upon retirement. Contribution is compulsory for employers and employees. And this is basically is the government trying to ensure that you are putting in some money somewhere for your retirement. Now that you know what a pension is, the plans available, who is eligible to join a pension scheme? Now, it is always advisable that you start saving for retirement immediately. You get your very first check for your employment or the very first job that you do. You are able to start saving for your retirement. So legally, anyone who is above 18 years can start saving for retirement. The other people who also qualify for retirement include those working in organizations that do not have a retirement benefit scheme, people in seasonal or contractual employment, self-employment, people working in the diaspora, members of existing schemes who are changing jobs and would like to transfer their pension funds from their employer-sponsored scheme, members of existing pension schemes who seek to enhance their retirement savings, small to medium-sized employers who cannot afford to set a staff retirement scheme, and partnerships and practice setup, and also for NGOs. But one of the most important questions that is asked, what if I leave my employment, then what happens? Or what if I change jobs, what happens to my pension? 
The individual pension plan belongs to you and is not affected by job changes. If you are part of employer's pension scheme, the current law allows you to withdraw 100% of your own contributions to the scheme plus interest earned and a further 50% of the employer's contributions plus interest earned. The balance of 50% must be retained in the scheme until age of 50. This is a legal requirement to safeguard people against old age poverty. So now that you've been putting your money for 30, 40 years for your employment, can you lose it? No. And here's why. The contributions have a 100% capital guarantee. The retirement benefit schemes managed by insurance companies are guaranteed funds, which means that the insurance company guarantees the capital or contributions put into the scheme plus a minimum rate of return. This means that if money is lost in the course of investment, the client's money is fully protected and it is the insurance company that bears the loss. So there you have it. I know there are a lot of people who've put money in long-term plans and of course we've had stories about money was lost but your retirement is safe as it is also protected by the law to prevent you from experiencing poverty at old age. Remember, you are watching Mula Insider, and of course, on my side, I'm telling you about everything that you know pension. It's basically the ABCs of pension, what is pension, what pension plans are there, and of course, you're looking at the common questions that are asked. Still on questions, one of the questions that is commonly asked is, what if I die? What happens to my pension? The total fund arising from contributions and investments is paid to the nominated beneficiary immediately upon loss of life. The total fund is also payable to you or your beneficiary in case of incapacitation. So in case anything happens to you, it can be paid to you or to the beneficiary or the next of kin that you have indicated while applying for the pension. So now that you always contribute pension and you like to know how do you keep tabs with your pension, first of all, it's actually very important to keep tabs with your pension. And of course, the other question is asked, does it gain interest? How do I keep tabs with it? Yes, you can. At the end of the every year, the insurance company sends a statement to each member clearly reflecting the contributions made by the member, the contributions made by the employer, if any, and the income earned from these respective contributions. So any time that you receive that annual report from your insurance, please, please make sure that you read it. And of course, this will help you know and keep tabs of your contributions and if they are up to date as they should. So the other beauty that comes with saving up for your pension is the tax benefit and the tax relief that comes with it. So when you save for your pension, you can be able to enjoy a bit of tax relief, meaning that you are able to pay less tax if you're saving up for pension. Here are the other benefits of saving up for pension and the tax reliefs that you can get. Pension contributions are tax deductible. The income tax allows for a maximum tax deductible contributions of 20,000 per member per month or 30% of the salary or whichever is less. Income earned from investments is tax-free and therefore generates more funds for reinvestment. On retirement before 65 years, the annual tax-free pension is 300,000 shillings. Pension and lump sum payments after the age of 65 are tax-free. At retirement or withdrawal, you are entitled to receive a free lump sum payment of about 600,000 shillings. And of course, all this is tax-free. And these are simply the benefits of you saving up for retirement. Remember, you are watching Mula Insider. And of course, today we are out here to simply educate you the importance of saving for retirement. And the reason that we are out here is simply to say, you know, this is the life that you might want. Quiet, peaceful for your retirement. And it doesn't come easy. You need to plan for it and you need to save for it and you need to invest in it. And lastly, we are taking a look at the tips that you need for you to plan a happy retirement or even to have a happy retirement. Number one. Plan for early retirement. I know we've all had our plans. We need to retire at the age of 65, some 70. But some, there's something that COVID has taught us that you need to plan early. And retirement can come as early as 40 or even 35. But so what happens when you retire early? These are some of the things that you need to also consider when you're planning for retirement. Plan for an early retirement also while planning for your major retirement after your working years. Secondly, in order for you to enjoy your golden years after working for so long, 
pay your debts early. Strive to make sure that you pay your debts while you're working. It will be very hard for you to pay your debts while you don't have a source of income and you have retired. And imagine all the money that you've worked for and saved for your retirement all going to pay your debts. So strive to pay your debts while you're still working for you to fully enjoy the benefits of your retirement benefits. The other thing that you need to consider is understanding your retirement income options. What plan are you on? And also monitor all your statements, annual statements, quarterly statements, understand how much you're, you're contributing, understand how much is coming in, the interest that you're earning, and all this you can get it in your annual statements that you receive from your insurance company. Also, make a point to visit NSSF and keep tabs with your contributions and how much you have and if um, it's been remitted either by your employer or by the person who handles your finances. This is just to make sure that all your money is safe and that you can have some money out of your retirement. The other last but not least also is get a part-time work during retirement. You've accumulated all these years of experience and wisdom and people will be coming for you for advice, for strategies on how to do their businesses, especially younger people or even your juniors who are getting into the industry you're in. Charge them for that and the beauty about it is and now with working from anywhere across the world, you can offer these services in a yacht in Dubai or you can offer these services on a cruise or you can offer these services while playing golf and just enjoying your happy retirement. It's not full time, it's part time, but you're just simply charging for all the wisdom you've accumulated all your working years. Well, that's all we had today for you folks on the ABCs of pension. I hope you've learned something new. Well, today was all about understanding pension, the schemes that are available for you to save up for pension and the tips that you need in order to save up for pension for retirement and have a happy retirement at the end of working for so long. My name is Masi Milanoi. I have started saving for retirement. I hope you have too. And remember to log on to our website www.mula.co.ke and link with us on our social media pages to catch up with all the wonderful stories that we have for you. Now thank you Masi for that detailed information on what we need to know about pension. Over your career you may have worked in different organizations. This means you may have different pension schemes. That is where the idea of pension consolidation comes in. Let's take a look. Kenya's employment laws require that permanent employees are enrolled onto a work pension scheme. This means that every time their salary is due, a small part is kept away for their future use. The money becomes a pension plan, which is a pool of savings that will cater for their upkeep once they retire. A pension plan is funded by either the employee, the employer, or both the employee and their employer. So why is a pension plan a good idea? If you think life is tough when you're working, try getting to retirement with no money <laughs> it can be a nightmare you know because when you're retired you don't even have the strength to hustle the way you can hustle when you're still uh, young and strong so when you're young and strong you need to save up uh, in a retirement fund keeping in mind that when you're old you will not be able to work and what will you be eating because when you retire your expenses don't retire According to the Retirement Benefits Authority, only 20% of workers in Kenya have pension schemes. However, there are various schemes in the market that have been able to include those out of this bracket. In Kenya, we, we, we mainly have um, group schemes which are employer-sponsored. So the, the employer sponsors a pension scheme or a retirement benefit scheme. Uh, and in these retirement benefit schemes, the employees are able to save into this scheme and the employer also contributes some money every month and so the fund is built up. Then if your employer doesn't have a retirement scheme or if you are self-employed or you're employed in the informal sector, you don't have to worry. We have what we call individual, uh, individual retirement benefits plans. The third one that is um, a new one is we have uh, like especially Kenya, uh, the economy is driven by the informal sector. So we have small emplo uh, employers who have maybe five staff, three staff, 10 staff. So forming, uh, uh, coming up with a group uh, retirement scheme may be a bit cumbersome for them. So we now have what we call the umbrella retirement benefit uh, schemes. 
Combined, the pension schemes hold more than 1.2 trillion shillings. Funds collected by pension funds are usually invested in diverse asset classes, such as government bonds, equities, real estate, offshore investments, and other places where they can continue to generate wealth. If you have had more than one job, it is likely that you have paid into more than one contribution pension scheme. This means you end up with a number of pensions scattered across different providers. And this is where the idea of consolidating these funds becomes crucial. Number one, you can leave your fund uh, intact in, the, in your previous scheme where you are working. So you leave it there, you continue being a member of that scheme, and that fund continues to build up because every year it earns interest, compound interest, and you're given a, a member's statement and you're able to track how your, your fund is growing. If you're happy with it, you can leave it there. Number two, you can also uh, transfer that money. The law allows you to transfer the money. You just instruct the trustees. They transfer that money from your previous scheme to your current employer. If your current employer has a staff retirement, benefit scheme which is registered. The third option, if you're not very comfortable leaving your money in the previous employer and maybe your current employer doesn't have a scheme or you don't want to put your money there, you have a third option which is opening up the individual pension plan account. Any pensionable employee has the right to withdraw up to 100% of his or her contribution, plus 50% of the employer's contribution. But according to research, this is one of the biggest mistakes you can make. We all love having money now. You know, ah, let me just get it now and we have these very nice, wonderful ideas. You know, I'll, go, I'll start a side hustle. I'll even be making more money. I'll go buy clothes from where and sell. I'll make a lot of money, you know. But uh, studies have shown, RBA have, have done a lot of studies that have shown that any pension money that we withdraw within two years, <laughs> that money is gone <laughs> and we can't even see what we did with it. Huh? So even RBA comes out very strongly because they've done a lot of studies that actually show um, it's very good for you to just leave this money in the scheme. Keeping the money means that it will accumulate to the point where when you retire, you will access either a huge lump sum as well as a monthly payout that will be sufficient for you to maintain your lifestyle. One of the things uh, I always say and I always tell people, imagine you are old, you are sickly, you have no energy, and you have no income. It's one of the saddest things in life. And you need income that is a cash flow. But I always advise people, please don't take out your money. Because now you have really done, and you know, saving and building a fund is not very easy, then you eat it up. Then you try a building again. By the time you get to retirement, you will have no money to live on. Our word of the week is indexation. This is the amount that the monthly pension payment may be increased from one year to the next to provide inflation protection. It is sometimes referred to as escalated adjustment. In pursuit this week, our star is Ian Mutwiri, the owner of Ian Farmhouse. We look at how he started his business and how he's using value addition to give his products an edge in the market. My name is Ian uh, Mutwiri. I'm the proprietor of Ian Farmers. We call ourselves the House of Value Addition. We look at the resources around us, and uh, from those resources, we add value to come up with uh, products. Before then, I was doing uh, what you call industrial trainings. I used to gather youths and uh, women from different uh, organizations, that is churches, those guys who have finished uh, high school, college. When I looked at those youth, those are, they have uh, capacity and most of them they are learning. So I wanted to like impact their lives because I know the, pro the, the journey that I've took after college. So I wanted to come up with uh, that idea of uh, train them on the resources that are around them and then they can come up with a product. So we would look ar around the resources that are around them in terms of agricultural uh, raw materials. After doing that for a while, I thought it was important for me to have a product because you can't train people and yet you don't have any product to showcase that this is what I do and this is what you can come up with. So it's from that that I came up with uh, two products, 
that is uh, the tamarind paste and the honey. I actually started with 15,000 shillings because I had a dream of, uh, you know, even getting to the, to the big stores. So my main objective was first to get the certification from the cabs. With that 15,000 shillings, I could buy the raw materials, the packaging, uh, the, lab the labels, and also do the cabs. I've never taken a loan. 15,000 shillings, I could manage my starting. Because uh, basically what you need is just the raw material and now the packaging. You start small. In my rural area, the lower part, it's where the tamarind grows. And tamarind plant is uh, an indigenous tree. And those people from that area, when it's kind of dry, they would come to our place, which now I come from uplands, and bring the tamarind for exchange of uh, food. And uh, when I remember that, I thought, let me do a research and understand the benefits of tamarind. And uh, it's from that now I, I decided, let me come up with a product that can has health benefits. That is where now I came up with the tamarind uh, paste. The paste because I wanted to even work for people and just have the product for them ready to use. Where I work from, there are no tamarind trees. There's a cost of transport from getting the raw material from the farmers to where I do my production. And since I'm a startup, I don't have a big machine to do the production. So I use uh, the available tools around me. That is a fire. And uh, basically the utensils that you use in the kitchen to process that product. So uh, the cost is, is affordable and uh, yeah, and the margins uh, are not bad. I usually sell them in, a, in containers, in, in cans. And so uh, one box of those cans contains over 45 cans. So I can make, I can make between 20 to 30 cans per day. Now the cost of production of uh, 350 grams can uh, goes between 120 and 180. How I market my products is through word of mouth. Uh, so from that I get referrals and also social media uh, platforms, such as the Facebook, the Twitter. Probably in the next two or so weeks, we should be in uh, Health U stores around uh, the country. And also I w I'm coming up with uh, an online, Ian Farmers online stall, whereby guys can, can log in and buy our products online. Yes, I can say this is a great opportunity for guys to be, uh, to get into, we call it an organic uh, kind of market, whereby you just do natural stuff because everybody is cautious about his health. And so I think this is an opportunity for young guys out there to come up with products that are very natural. So long as you have a good product, guys will always buy your product. It's good to reinvent something that you can add value and then you make some money from it. Let's now take a look at the leading indicators, starting with the stocks and the foreign exchange. We now look at the prices of basic commodities this week.
That's all we had for you on Mula Insider this week. Remember to log on to www.mula.co.ke for these and more stories. See you next week.